I was pretty lucky where I grew up. Um, we lived maybe only about two, three hundred yards from the local GA club, Clevey. And my childhood days were spent down there. Once you go home from school, you're still at the end of the pitch for a kick around and, and a mess around. And being the younger of three brothers, um, you know, I followed my brothers to where they were going and uh, they were heavily involved in, in, in playing for the underage teams in Clevey. So I was down playing and participating with, with the boys um, just like they were. Um, a few years younger, all right, but um, threw me in at the deep end. And that was my early involvement with the GAA, um, probably as a six, seven-year-old playing in an under-10 team. Yeah, I have a number of influences on my on my career. Obviously, I, I mentioned my two older brothers. You know, you always look up to your elder siblings, um, and you know, I looked up to those two guys. Uh, they're they're very good footballers in my eyes. Um, but the the one man that always sticks out in my mind is my very first underage coach, Thomas Mallon. He sadly passed away about six or seven years ago, but Thomas was uh, a fantastic coach. He coached. Um, teams probably for a couple of decades in Clevey, um, but really honed in on, on the basics of the game, uh, working both sides, left and right foot, left and right hand, simple catches, the hand passing, the, the punt passing, and really concentrated a lot of his time and effort on, on improving the skills of the young people of, of Clevey. And um, Thomas was a local headmaster as well, so he had that strictness about him where you didn't want to cross him either. But um, he was a fantastic coach, and you know um, I would dedicate a lot of what I achieved in my in my career um, simply down to the fact that um, the hours upon hours of then this coaching that Thomas uh, put in to to not only myself but um, the Clevey teams that I grew up playing in. But um, <clears throat> the one the one skill that I really believe stuck me uh, and, and really helped me throughout my career was the fact that I could kick both left and right foot and that was simply um, the, the message coming from Thomas Mullen. I was fortunate enough I played a couple of years at minor level, I played a few years at under 21 level but at senior level um, my very first game uh, I can remember a lot of the games, but my first challenge game was a game against Meath where my introduction to senior county football um, was against a very physical Meath team. And the first ball I went for, I got the studs down the back of the calf. So um, welcome to the big league uh, as such. But um, moving on, I, I was part of the 99 team that won Ulster for the first time in 17 years. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to play any uh, games that particular year, but... When when in '99 in they came into the squad, there was three national league games before Christmas and four afterwards. So, um, I made it my business to work extremely hard in the off season um, between the '99 and 2000 season, and I I managed to make an impression on the two brands, Brian McLinton and Brian Canavan at the time, and they gave me my debut against Donegal in the Athletic Grounds in October 1999. Um, a good test for me, a, a local team to us that we had beat in the Ulster Championship um, that, that the previous campaign. So it, it was always going to be a good tough test, but he ended up kicking three points, um, marking a, a seasoned campaigner in, in Mark Crossan. And I remember having a good battle with him that day, but kicking three points from my debut um, was a great experience. The first game for me in Croke Park um, is an experience that um, I would like to forget. Maybe I was taken off, so I was. But uh, having experienced, uh, I suppose the the ninety nine campaign, we actually got to a semi final of the league in ninety nine, which was, it was played in Crook Park too. I I experienced running onto the field of Crook Park, but I, not playing in any of the games um, previous to my my first start in Crook Park, which was, was the two thousand All Ireland semi final against Kerry. Um, for me. I seen it as a lifetime ambition of getting to play in in the best pitch, best stadium in the country in, in Crook Park, and you know that's where my dreams were growing up as a kid was was representing the county and, and running on to the hollow turf. Um, it was a difficult day for me. I was maybe eleven and a half stone, very light at that particular time, so it was, and I found it going tough. I, I'll not lie about it. The night before the game, I was playing it over and over in my head. I, I happened to be rooming in the City West with Cahill O'Rourke, 
who was a good season player for us that year, um, a very experienced player. And he always reminds me of the question that I asked him. I turned around to him maybe about midnight when we, were, when we should have been sleeping. And I just said, Cahill, what's it like to play in Croke Park? So he just knew that I was running over my head. He just turned around and told me, Stephen, shut up. <laughs> Straight away. So um, it was something that was playing over and over my head. And I'll never forget the parade that particular day. Um, the parade is always a great experience for any player um, if you use it to your advantage. And that day, unfortunately, it back, backfired against me. I walked around the parade, taking in the whole atmosphere, taking in the crowd, and not focused on my main job, which was playing the match. I, I probably played the occasion and not the match. And um, I had one of my worst days um, ever. I, w- I was held scoreless. Um, the only time in my career for Armagh that I was held scoreless. And I got taken off and... Unfortunately, we ended up drawing that game, but I got dropped for the replay. I came on and made a, a difference in the replay when I came on, but um, the experience of getting taken off and dropped for a replay and not playing to the best of your ability was something that stood me, um, believe it or not, throughout the rest of my career. Um, I didn't want to experience that again, but um, something that I, I did that I look back with um, regret more so than fond memories. Yeah, the lead up to Crook Park, it was always, um, you always had something great to look forward to and, and any occasion, you know, when, I suppose our uh, ambition at the time was to win Ulster and to see how far we could go. And we were fortunate enough that we had won a couple of Ulsters and it took us the road up to Crook Park. Um, when Joe Kiernan came in then, his, I suppose, philosophy was a wee bit different than the previous two managers and um he, he prepared a wee bit differently and he, he prepared his teams a wee bit differently and therefore we were heading up to the City West a wee bit more frequent than we, what we would have previously done. Um, we would have had reruns of the match maybe the week before games um, to the exact time. Joe would have prepared us, you know, what time you'd be taking to the pitch at, what time you'd be doing the parade at, what time the, the ball would be thrown in at and then from that moment on, you know, the responsibility lay with us um, to go and put in a performance. And it was, I suppose, the, the exact detail that was put into it by the Joe and his management team that left our job, I suppose, really easy, you know, and, and, and simple. Uh, all we had to do was worry about the football aspect of things, go and perform, and if we could do that, um, generally we could get a, a result. And so, therefore, um, you know, a lot of the build-up going into matches in Crow Park was spent in weekends up around the city west, but uh, preparing ourselves and gearing ourselves mentally and psychologically for, for the battles ahead, which was the big games. I was always a, a big believer, and I still am a big believer, in how you train is, is how you perform. Um, I trained extremely hard. Um, I, I was never the most serious uh, personality. I, I, could, I, I knew when to have a wee bit of downtime, but I knew when to be serious at the right time. Um, but I always believed if I trained hard, I could perform in the big games. And therefore, between the last training session and the big game, it allowed me an opportunity to relax a wee bit more. Um, it was something that I, I, I learned to deal with a bit more as my career went on. Um, so in the build up to some games, um, I tried to be as casual as any um, as anyone was. Um, my room was always one of the the first protocols for the biscuits. So it was, so I, I would take the the secret stash of biscuits up to the room, um, and the boys would be calling for for the biscuits with our tea. Uh, I would have been um, keen on maybe a round or two of golf in the lead up to um, a big game. Just maybe even going around the course by myself and just to, to focus my mind, keep keep my mind off the match. You would obviously think about the game in, in, in certain moments, but um, mainly you're keeping your mind off the match as much as possible. Then um, the day before, just relax and stretch out as much as you possibly could. Um, obviously, sometimes you'd be thinking about the game again. Sometimes you would be trying to concentrate your efforts elsewhere, maybe a game of snooker in a hotel or whatever it may be. And then the morning of the game, you know, you do have the butterfly feeling. Everyone experiences that. And I always say to any player who feels the nerves and feels the butterfly sensation in their stomach, it's always a great thing to have uh, because you know you're going into 
something exciting, you know, that you're going into a battle and something that you, you've trained yourself to go in towards. And um, I suppose when you hit the dressing room, then there's a moment to, to spend by yourself to do your own uh, preparation and warm up. And then there's a moment to get serious. And everyone around that, the dressing room, particularly in that Armagh team, all different type of characters. Benny Tierney was the life and soul of the party, as well. Kieran McGinney was probably a bit more focused on on what he was trying to achieve. Um, I was probably a wee bit relaxed when we went into the dressing room, really focused but relaxed. But then the closer we got to the game, um, I knew when the time was for me to really get into the zone, and that was probably about 20 25 minutes pre game. Kieran McGinney, I can always remember looking at him in a dressing room and his eyes would be closed. He'd be sitting down, really focusing on his own performance and uh, driving the team forward. Kieran was the captain of the team. So, you know, he probably seen it as a responsibility to drive everyone else forward. Um, myself and Nashin probably had a similar type of, um, you know, pretty much preparation, warm up mentally and, and psychologically. Um, the likes of Mag and T twins were very relaxed. Uh, uh, guys, you know, they, they talk it all in their stride. Um, Paul McGrain, probably more so towards the likes of, of Kim McGinney, very focused individual, very determined individual. And, and Benny, as, as we mentioned, Benny would keep the crack going, particularly in the in the bus journeys. And it was very, very important to have a character like Benny in the team environment. Um, the bus journeys on the way into Crook Park and the way into Clonus, wherever it may be, particularly Crook Park, you're driving down Jones's Road, both sides of the road full of supporters from from both teams and and Benny still having the crack and keeping the mood light light hearted as much as possible and that meant that we could go into the dressing room in, in a good spirit um and, and Benny knew then once he hit the dressing room that you know time was for him to focus as well so it was getting the a good mix between the the serious end of things and and the, the having a joke and having a laugh and um you know the McNulty boy, brothers were were very serious campaigners at, as well but and on the bus they were always full of jokes and, and, and cracks as well so it was good to have that that kind of um, mix and, and blend and um you know everyone prepares differently in all team sports and all individual sports and and that was just the way we were you know I was probably a wee bit more relaxed. Than, than some of the characters, but probably not as relaxed as others in our dressing room as well. Ultimately, you know, we were going to win a game, game of football, and we wanted to win a game of football, playing the best possible style of football that we that we could. And um, therefore, whatever got you into the zone to make sure that you got the best out of yourself, um, that's all we had to do. That That's the best time. That is absolutely... The best time when you're leaving the dressing room, coming in underneath the tunnel, and for some reason, I always loved to be in the first five players coming out because you really got the the buzz of the crowd as soon as you see the team coming out. Uh, that real sensation of of a good atmosphere, um, it, it really was spine tingling, and I wanted to be one of the first players out all the time, showing that I was really up for the battle and and prepared for it. And, that, that's always a special moment. I, I think any intercounty player that experiences running out under the tunnel in Crook Park will tell you the moment that they hit that turf and the crowd gets up uh, behind you, you know, it really makes the hair stand in the back of your neck and um, it gives you a real lift. For some reason, you know, you think you're a wee bit lethargic and into the game or whatever. And then for some, once you hit that, that uh, surface and the crowd gets behind you, it gives you a serious lift and you have momentum going on from that. To be honest, very, very vague memories. Um, I can remember Joe going through us for a shortcut. I, um, you come in and, and what Joe always tended to do, um, give us the first five minutes in the dressing room as a group of players by ourselves. And himself and Paul Grimney and the background team would assemble and, and put their thoughts together. Um, and that's what we've done. Um, I, what I remember about the final was that... Um, Tony McEntee, who was a sub that particular day, would come on and play a massive part in the second half. Um, going through a number of players and giving out to a number of players because we weren't performing at the maximum level that we could have been performing at. And we went in a halftime, four points down. So, you know, we really knew that we needed something special to go out and, and lift us and get us going for the second half. And um, Joe came in. Joe had ex experienced 
where we didn't want to go, which was losing an All Ireland final uh, 25 years previous to that. And he had the losers medal from that particular day. And I do remember him throwing it off the walls and breaking it, whatever. And you know, when you see moments like that, there that definitely inspire you to go out and, and do better in the second half. And and that's what happened. You know, um, to remember word for word what Joe said, it would be quite difficult at this particular time. But I always remember both Kieran McGinnis and Joe's um, team talks pre-game and at halftime and, and they're really emotional experiences so they were, you know, they really got deep and, and, and personal about their love for, for playing for the county and representing the county and, and that definitely inspired us as a team as well. We were really clinging on for our life um, in the last 10 minutes. We we kicked on, we, we went a point ahead and we had opportunities to maybe go a couple of other points ahead, but we didn't take them. And so therefore, you know, we were fighting for our lives to, to try to stay in front of a, a very good carry team. Um, but what I do remember was that the dirty ball that had to be won, the, the high catch or the, or the flick that had to be won, we just had the serious hunger and desire to go and do it and to get it, get our hands on the ball and to keep possession. And, and that's what got us over the line at the end. And, and you know, it was a fit tribute to Kieran McGinney that he, he managed to be the player at the end that had the ball in his hands that when the final whistle went. Um, I suppose it's, it's just sheer joy, you know. Armagh waited all, all their living days. Uh, supporters of Armagh waited all their living days to see that moment and, and we are part of it. And... The, the floods of people coming onto the pitch. I can, you, you remember little, you, all you can remember is the, the sea of orange and white around you and being lifted on the people's shoulders and being passed around. And that's that's a serious feeling, so it is. And the one memory that really sticks out in my mind from, from that particular time and being carried around people's shoulders on, 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 on Croke Park was looking down and the first people that I remember actually seeing was one of my brothers. And, and my mates that I grew up at, you know, they, they managed to get themselves from Hill 16 and below me. And that was a great feeling. So it was, um, and then to be carried on. And at that point, you, you know, right, we want to go over towards the Hogan stand steps. Get, get, get me over there as, as quick as possible because, you know, it was just a sheer emotion on the pitch. Um, so it was, and as we were walking up the, the Hogan stand steps, I happened to meet my wife. So she managed to get herself over over towards the steps as well. And that, that was a brilliant feeling. So people, you know, that you really love and, and you know, you've grown up with um, finding their way to you was special memories for me. I'm very, very lucky. Um, I experienced a lot of success with Arma. Therefore, you know, we we had a lot of really, really good days. Um, the all Ireland win will will be up there definitely and and that sensation of of knowing that you're you're the best team in the country and having a sea of orange and white and club park service is brilliant but i think the game that stands out in, in my mind as being probably the best atmosphere um, and the one that gave us the confidence to kick on when the all Ireland was the semi-final that particular year against dublin um, it actually was on tv not so not so long ago and i happened to watch it and from my memory, I always remember it being a classic, but the first half was, was by no means a classic. But the second half, the game really came to life. And the one thing that really stood out in my mind was, you know, both teams were very evenly matched. They were going point for point um, the whole way through the game. And when we got our goal, Dublin was straight up and got their goal. But the atmosphere that day was just absolutely electric. And any day you play against Dublin and Croke Park, there's always something carnival-like about it, so there is. And if you can put in a performance there against the Dubs in a packed house in Croke Park, you can put in a performance against anyone in Croke Park. And, and that gave us serious belief as a squad of players to kick on and to win the All-Ireland that particular year. And I would say that that was the one game that I would really, really love to play over again um, in, in my career. This is a question that I suppose as the years go on, you get asked more and more. And um, once again, I faced a lot of very tough uh, opponents in my, in my career. Um, you look at Ryan McManaman, uh, Ryan McCluskey from Fermanagh, um, Kevin McGuckin from Derry, Mark O'Shea, lots of good, good players, very, very 
good tight uh, markers and guys that you know that if you're not in your A game, those boys are going to absolutely destroy you. So um, they're all tough markers in their own right. Uh, but the one player who probably made me the player that I became and um, taught me the, the hard lessons that I was going to face in, in championship was Enda McNulty from Armagh. And um, Enda marked me most nights in training. And at that particular time, I would always say that Enda was possibly the best man-to-man marker in the game. And if I was lucky enough to have Enda marking me in training, then that was gear me in the right way. Uh, going into any championship game and um, to say that and uh, physically abused me in training sessions <laughs> would be an understatement but you know I give as good back and I always believe that um, and the top and it brought my game to new levels simply because he, he was a fantastic man-to-man marker he was physically very strong he was lightning quick to the ball and um, he really rarely give you an inch and if you if you got a couple of points off end in training you're well prepared going into the championship games my first experience of playing for Ireland was in 2003 after we lost the All-Ireland final to Tyrone um, I never actually trained with the team but I got selected on the on the panel to travel down to Australia so at that particular time I wasn't sure how I would gel or blend into the team environment. I wasn't sure how I would adapt to the game. But thankfully, um, in my first uh, day out, in my debut day, I managed to kick 18 points. So it was a good start and it gave me a lot of belief and confidence that uh, I, I was suited to the game. Um, but playing alongside players that you test yourself against uh, on, a, on a regular basis in, in championship football was a great experience. Um, you know, players from Kerry, Donegal, Tyrone Galway, and and the the foreign friendship. So those guys w- was a fantastic experience and um, one that I always look back. You know, my career. People always people have mixed feelings over the international rules, but anytime I got the opportunity to pull that Irish jersey over um, my 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 neck and, and on me, um, there was a sheer sense of a, a proud feeling about me. You know, and um, the way the way jerseys are presented. At that level as well, is always a, a great feeling too. Because you know, you're called. Each player is called individually by the manager. Sometimes the manager will present the jersey to you, or sometimes he'll have a guest in. And throughout the numerous international rules uh, series that I played, I was fortunate that Anthony Toll, Sean Boylan, guys that I played on there, um, Pete McGrath, all Ireland winning managers, all Ireland winning players. I I happened to play on there, but um. They invited in guests like Jack O'Shea, one of the all-time greats, to to present jerseys to you. For me, I was always Jack O'Shea in the backyard of my house. And to have him present a jersey to me, which happened to be the year that I was captain, was an unbelievable feeling. Um, Martin O'Neill, um, a soccer manager, but a, a soccer manager with a background in GA, came in to present jerseys to us one time. And, you know, that, that's a brilliant feeling as well. But pulling on the Ireland jersey, representing your country, and, and playing with players that you know are the top players in, in, in the country was a brilliant feeling. And, and luckily and thankfully, um, I got the opportunity to cap in my country, um, which was a brilliant feeling as well. Listen to all your coaches. You, you know, I'm no different than um, anyone in your own club telling you what to do. You know, work off both sides. And um, that was the important message that I got from a very early age. Work off both sides and you'll be twice as hard to mark or to play against because if you're a player that can turn to the left and turn to the right just as good, then that's a difficult um, player to play against. So it is. Um, but definitely the advice that all the coaches give to you, you're not going to take it all in, but take wee nuggets of it. Take wee nuggets of information and try to improve each night that you go to training. Um, set yourself long-term ambitions set yourself a goal that you you even if you're a seven or eight year old that you eventually want to represent your county because um you know you, you might think that it's too far away setting yourself a goal that but but it's not you know it's over in a flash and, and you get to that stage in a flash as well and just enjoy playing football just enjoy playing sport you know the more you enjoy playing and participating in the sport the better you will become the more fun you will have and always play with a smile on your face that, that's the, the biggest message always play with a smile on your face 
um, and, and enjoy what you're doing because the reason why any of us pull on a jersey in the first place was to have good fun and, and to make friends and, and have lots of laughs along the way. And I could say I certainly did that. Um, my advice to any young kid with any aspirations of representing a county, don't, you know, don't take it too seriously. Have fun, um, enjoy yourself. And, you know, the, the better fun that you have on the pitch, the more you will improve as long as you're willing to put that extra wee hard, bit of hard work in at the right time as well. You, you always have to look at the successes and say, you know, um, you know, delighted what we achieved. We are the first arm part of the first arm team that won all Ireland, part of the first arm team that won uh, the very first National League. Um, we won seven Ulsters in a short space of time. Um, had lots and lots of successes and um, thankfully those successes from RMI um, allowed me to represent Ulster, allowed me to represent um, Ireland and to play many great players but the one thing that I always look back and say is you know the friendships that I made is, is really special for me so it is and you know I think if you can retire and hold your head up high and go to any part of the, the country and have friends in every county, you know, I think that's that's a great feeling and something great to look back upon and, and say that, you know, you made many people happy, you made many people sad by how you performed as well, but you made many people happy by how you performed too. And along the way, it was a great journey, plenty of successes, but you made plenty of great friends.